Uh, hi, how's it going? I'm good. How are you? Well, so I'm better now, now that I get a chance to speak with you. How, is, how has your year been? I've had a great year. Yeah, I've been very busy, actually. Um, I did uh, this small role on Sort Of, and then, of course, The Kids in the Hall came out, um, I guess, in June. Um, I've been doing a lot of um, stand-up again. I'm back to doing stand-up. And I'm working on a Buddy Cole show, and I'm recording an album with my band Mouth Congress. It's been a very, very busy time. And then I played. I have. The, I'm going to be in this new series on Netflix, where I play Arnold Schwarzenegger's psychiatrist in his new series. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. I've had a good yeah. year. And the Netflix special as well, too. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> that was also nice to see. Um, what, what, what has that been like? Have you felt? Have you felt like rejuvenated? creatively yeah well yes very much so it's been a very creative year uh painful uh you know creation is painful and especially when we were shut down for such a long time i think uh you kind of calcify a little bit so there was a, the first period was kind of like shaking it off and like kind of breaking that kind of armor that we all put on and um but that's been kind of exciting um you know uh i found I miss live performing so much. And also what I really miss, especially today in today's world, is um, I, it's much, I feel free on stage, whereas I don't feel that free any longer with legacy media. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But on stage, you really can't. You can, you, there's no one stopping you. It's just a direct, uh, it's a direct link between you and your audience. And yes, you can say things that are, will upset people and you can go too far but the audience will let you know and it's a kind of an organic uh experience and um it's an organic relationship which i really appreciate and also the thing about a, about being in front of a live audience is it provides context a lot of comedy today a lot of people are very um so easily offended and they're they're looking to be offended and comedy doesn't really live on the page if it's meant to be spoken and when it's spoken then you have all the nuance and the way that people deliver it and you you understand what came before that joke and you understand what came after that joke and then context makes it much more i don't know i wouldn't say acceptable because i think that all comedy is kind of unacceptable in a weird way and that's kind of comedy's job and um, so that's what I've really rediscovered is like, oh, I really miss just me and the audience. I miss um, them deciding or us deciding together whether we should go further rather than faceless executives who are just basically trying to, you know, cover their ass and <laughs> keep the money coming in. How does it feel when you perform as Buddy Cole? Versus well, that's very interesting. It's a different thing now. Um, it's been it's gone through so many different iterations. There was a period where I went, "Oh God, I mean, does it even matter anymore? Like, can I continue to do this? Will, will people understand why I first started doing Buddy? Why I continue to do Buddy?" Um, he's not as necessary for me as he used to be. I mean, he literally, I had to create Buddy because there was no way for a person like me to be honest in their comedy. And um, Buddy uh, was my voice. I had to disguise myself in a strange way. And now I don't have to, but I still like to. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I can be myself, but then there's, there's things that I write that I go, well, that's for me. And then that's for Buddy. And I think sometimes what I've discovered is the more delicate an issue is, or the more likely it is to go offside, is that's the material you give to Buddy because he's um, it's smarter than me. He's he's more in control than I am, and he's a he's a true kind of he's a stoic, so he doesn't let things get to him. And I'm working towards that, but I'm still not there. But when I'm Buddy, you really can't hurt me. And, um, and nothing bothers me. And that's really kind of powerful. Part of the reason I ask is because when we see you in sort of as Bryce, I'm not quite sure if it's sort of- Oh no, it's me. It's, it's Bryce, it's certainly not Buddy. I mean, I'm not, 
I have a mustache for God's sake. Buddies wouldn't have a mustache. Right. Um, yeah, Bryce is, I, I mean, he's just, he's a character. I mean, you know, he's there. I think I represent um, a different generation. I think I represent the generational divide. Um, or not the divide, but I'm certainly on the other side. And um, it's definitely quite a divide right now. So I think it's important to put someone like me in this show. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I think I'm, re I'm also, I, I really am there for comedy. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I really am going for comedy yeah. and I love that. And I, I, um, I really do not all, yeah, I pretty much always think what's funny. Like, I don't think anything is so dramatic that it can't be funny. My favorite comedy is usually comedy that's embedded in a dramatic frame, mm. you know, because that's how people illuminate and live through darkness. I'm so glad that you mentioned that because when I think of the show, sort of, I think of that. A lot of the shows that I like right now that I'm enjoying are funny shows that are dramatic or dramatic shows that are funny yeah. or they, they meet at that, at that point, at that intersection where I'm not quite sure how to feel. And I, th yeah. I think with sort of, from what I've seen, from the little I've seen, you, 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 you found that already mm -hmm. sort of is one of those shows where it's, it's funny, but it's funny in a very kind of maybe quiet way or. Yes, it's very, it's very restrained. It's very mm -hmm. um, delicate. Like the Lao's a very um, nuanced actor. And um, so the main character is where everything flows from. So you, you have to take the lead from the main character and be Lao's a very gentle, um, I'd say a very skilled actor and, and, and doesn't try hard. But that's the interesting thing about Bilal's performing. It's very natural. So, you know, you have to fit into that. You can't, like, I can't be a, an over-the-top caricature, although there's elements of it to me. Um, but yeah, so I think that's what it is. It's following Bilal's lead. Have you engaged with this show? Had you had you been a viewer? How oh, I like the show. You... Yeah, I watched it. I watched the first season. I really enjoyed it. Um, were, you, were you approached? Um, to be on no. it? Well, they, yes, they asked me to be on it. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, I didn't audition. No. They they came to me and asked if I would do this part. So of course I said yes. I'd love to. Yeah, and I'm a big fan of Fab's too. So mm -hmm. I'd worked with Fab before in a series that he'd done. And I really enjoyed it. And I really like his, I've always liked his work as an actor and a director. So um, I really sent them a fan letter saying how much I loved it. And then they approached me and said, oh, would you like to do something on it? And I thought, yeah, of course, I'd love to. Did you have a lot of character notes? No. No? Not really, no. They no. said, here's sort of a little bit of a framework and you can do what, what you do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, no, nothing really. Um, no, and they let me um, improvise and 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 fiddle with the script. They they know that I'm also a writer, so that I don't you know I don't feel um, you know sometimes people don't want you to, and I accept that. I respect that. I also like it when people go maybe he does have something um, to contribute that way, and I, I love it. I, you know, I love writing. Writing is everything. What was your experience like of filming the show? Oh, very fun. I enjoyed it a lot. It was a lot of fun. It's, they're great actors. Um, you know, I just really enjoy them very much. I, I really enjoy Amanda. She's just a hilarious person. So we get along. You know, it's chemistry. Like I look at the, you know, the main characters and I go, oh, they have chemistry. And that's very important. I think people forget that chemistry is not very common. And when you find it with actors or any kind of creative people, you really should hang on. Like, that's what I would say. Like, I, I, when I was younger, I really thought, oh, I'll meet lots of people like the kids in the hall. I'll find chemistry like this all over the place. But it's it's incredibly rare. And you really should hang on to it because it just doesn't happen very often. And, um, you know, it's like love. And um, it, it goes through different periods. It is a love story. Uh, the kids in the hall are a love story. And there's times when we, our marriage is very bad. Um, right now our marriage is good um, but we went through a long bad period and there, there have been periods when I would think there's no way we can survive this but we we made a pact and we were very old fashioned that way so there really was no getting out like it was an old school kind of a marriage contract like 
till you know till death do us part i want to know then who have been some of those people over the years for you creatively uh oh. creators scene partners who have you felt like you've had that chemistry with well the kids in the hall obviously and then i've had many other creative people that i've worked with um darlene harrison cream was the first person i met at school we wrote stuff together plays together Deb Faker and I did many shows together. I worked with her a lot. I have lots of, I, I found enormous chemistry with Julie Klausner on the show. She was one of the writers and that was an instant thing like, oh fuck, we could work together forever. I wish I met her when I was much younger. But um, yeah, you know, I had a lot of chemistry like on Hannibal with Aaron Abrams. Yeah. I remember going, oh, we got really good chemistry. So those things are very important and they they do, and when they happen, I I love it. It's kind of, it's like you kind of fall in love. Or you brought up Hannibal. I have license to, uh, and Aaron, we uh, just talked to for Children Ruin Everything. I he's know he's hilarious in that. I'm so glad that people are finally seeing how funny Aaron is. What What do you think it was about that show that at the time it never NBC never gave it the platform that it deserved, and uh, like sort of another show in which you and Aaron were so funny on the show. But yet there's scenes that are so horrific, that are so that are so graphic, and yet you're it's still a funny show. And then there's other yeah. scenes like um, you know, with Raul the iron lung and uh being burnt, and it's just like there's so many ways to look at it and how to feel. Did you approach it like comedy first? Yes. <laughs> I hope Brian Fuller knows that. I think he does. I pretty much approach everything as a comedy. I, I think of life as a comedy. And so even when I'm doing dramatic things, I still think it's a comedy. Um, I remember after Hannibal I'd saying to people, this is a comedy, this is a very dark comedy, but I think you look at Hannibal now, I think you can see that. Yeah. I mean, Maz Mickelson is a very funny guy and they all are, that's the thing. The actors are all really funny. And so we all enjoyed each other. It was probably one of the lightest sets I've ever been on. Like mm -hmm. I've been in lots of sets, I've been in lots of situations, and sometimes, I mean, let's kids in the hall comedy sets. Sometimes, it's pretty grim. We've had some times when it's pretty grim on our set. We still manage to turn out the comedy, but it's not fun. But Hannibal, you'd think it would be a dark, gloomy atmosphere. No, it was extremely light. The moment there would be a cut, no matter if there was a corpse in front of you or a, a, a charred child. It would be the first thing out of Aaron's mouth or, you know, or Lawrence's mouth or or, Aaron, or Mads's mouth was a joke. Yeah. yeah, like, I don't think I ever saw Mads Mickelson or Hugh ever, like, serious. Yeah. Well, the, the ending, too, I'm, I always thought of it, too, as sort of a, if a comedy, a romantic comedy, because with Will it, and Hannah, yes, that's a, something. Yeah, it is. A There's very weird something going on with them. Yeah, they fall off a cliff together at the end. They do. I mean, you, how can you not think that's funny? I mean, yeah. it's it's tragic, but it's funny because you you know they're not going to die. <laughs> well, they have each other. They have. Each they other. need. They needed each other. I mean, can you think about? I mean, love itself is such a ridiculous joke. I mean, the idea that you have a love, you know, you have a partner that. <laughs> you're fated to be with and that it's better to die with them than to continue living is so ludicrous mm -hmm. you know because okay it's true I, I I'm kind of contradicting myself because I realized when those two characters meet it's chemistry so they do hang on for dear life mm -hmm. now whether I would go over a cliff with the five kids in the hall I don't know maybe <laughs> maybe now maybe that you your marriage is at a good point well, maybe so. I mean, you know, I'm proud of what we've done and it was, it's been an incredibly rocky time and it was extraordinarily difficult to make this series. Um, mm -hmm. so, and, I, and I don't think there's going to be more. Mm. So maybe it is time to, to get into that barrel. Well, I saw you had Julie as one of your writers um, when she probably wasn't involved originally that, you know, bringing new voices perhaps in. I mean, it's not the same. You can't do the same kids in the hall that you did 20, 30 years ago. No, no, of course not. No, and you didn't. Um, and you didn't go back to to characters either. To the same uh, characters, there weren't too many sort of legacy sketches. No, that... not really. You know, nope. No, I mean, and and you didn't, and we you didn't play the hits. 
you didn't play mm -hmm. the hits, you know. You didn't you didn't play the hits. You didn't well, know, no you Simon know. and Hecubus. Yeah, no yeah. Chicken Lady. Yeah, you know. Um, look, there there's no buddy monologues. Yeah, you know. But that's not because of us. We wrote them. They just wouldn't. They just wouldn't let them in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what do you what do you consider the essence of? Is it the, just the five of you together? Yes. And so it doesn't matter about sort of what you're doing with that. Not really. No, I mean, the one thing that I think the show is missing, well, there's a few things that I think it's missing. Um, there's not as much as us being ourselves. I would have liked a bit more of that. Like I, like I, I love the beginning when we're, in, when we're exhumed from the grave and I like the ending when we're trying to figure out how to continue this and what the young, youngsters are into. I wish we had a little bit more of that. We didn't really have the time. And also we didn't have part of the problem was it was done during the pandemic so there was no audience so i do miss that live audience but we could we weren't allowed to do it so we so there was no point in doing like monologues and pieces like that that need an audience there so that's that that, that i kind of miss um there, i i do miss i miss an audience but that was just not possible how did you feel about the documentary oh i i love it yeah, I I didn't watch it until we were all together um, in in the audience, and I seen parts of it. I knew what it was going to be about. I knew um, where they were going to go, so I was prepared. Um, I wasn't quite prepared. I knew that Bruce was. I knew that Bruce had had um, was going to <laughs> lose it. Mm. So I was warned. Bruce warned me, and I said I didn't really want to see that. Um, I did, but I didn't want to, I wanted to see it with everyone, all of us together. So that was a really nice experience. I thought it was quite a beautiful story. And I thought they did a great job. I think Reg did a phenomenal job. Correct me if I'm wrong on this. I'm trying to figure it out. Your character, Queen Elizabeth, you went on the national to perform as what? Just I didn't perform as her. I just went on to talk with Ian Hanneman saying about right. my relationship with Queen. Do you feel like you can still play that character? I don't know. Um, I know I could. Um, I think that the Queens will probably still continue to live on in, in comedy as the, in, in a strange way, the way that a, a character like Winston Churchill or Queen Victoria or Napoleon or Elvis do. Do you know what I mean? I think people, mm -hmm. I think she will become this kind of archetype that will live through the ages. And so I do think people will continue to play her. I think I probably will do her again. Um, I don't know how I will, but I'm certain I will. Well, maybe there'll be a new season of The Crown and I can play her from 60 to 70. <laughs> I was just going to, I was thinking the exact same thing, you know? I'd I was going to ask if you're a viewer of The Crown and... Uh, oh, I love it. I love The Crown. If you're, if you're using, if you're looking at your impression as, you know, that's one of your, the longest running characters that you've been mm -hmm. doing as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. So it must have been a little... Um, sad in a way. I mean, if it can live on. Oh, I was very sad when the queen died. Oh God, yeah, yeah. yeah I Just mean, to play, play a character she's... that's no longer. Well, living... it's, it, it's personal, like because you know, it's, just as a Canadian, I I grew up with her. She's the only queen I ever knew. I, I I'm old enough to remember when we sang "God Save the Queen." I mean, I remember. I remember when we didn't even have a flag as a little kid. Yeah. So I grew up in a country that was much much more British, and so. I grew up in a royalist family. My mother was a staunch royalist. She just loved the queen. Plus I had the accident of genetics that my family kind of looks like them. Like my father looks like the queen as a man. Um, and when you get to be 90, men and women look pretty much the same anyways. Yeah. Um, so there was that. It was, it was, it, and, and so, and I just also grew to love her as a person. I just thought, well, I never met the woman, but, I just went, well, that's a real character. I thought, I thought she was, I thought this is a great way to live a life. Like, I, I like the idea of duty. I've always had the same thing. Like, I have a duty to do. And so you just do it. Set up uh, sort of when um, uh, you and Amanda, who, have you worked together with Amanda before? I'm not. No. You, you said you found that chemistry. Um, oh, you're talking about the, the other Amanda. Yes. No, we never worked together before. Right. Um, what what can we expect in the later parts of the season? Oh, there's some good scenes. We have a good scene in a in a toilet. <laughs> there's some good. That's a good scene. Well, I with the both Amandas. Um, uh, yeah, that's a good scene. And I I there's a funny scene. I have a really funny scene. I think um, at a party. 
uh, <laughs> I kind of go too far. Do you have you ever met anyone like Bryce before? Oh God, yeah, of course, yes, yeah. I am a little Bryce. That's you know, yeah, a little bit. Um, oh God, yeah, of course, many times, <laughs> too many times. Right, right. Um, what's something that you can say about the Arnold Schwarzenegger show? It looks oh, really, really I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled. It was been an incre- It was a fantastic experience. I play as a psychiatrist, and I can talk about it now because I think it's yeah. You know, they're they're talking about it. Yeah. Um, I play a psychiatrist. He's uh, a spy who wants to retire, but he has one last job, and I won't tell the the plot. But something happens, and he can't he can't work with this person. So I'm brought in in second ep- in the second episode to help him and the, his this uh, this spy work together. So I'm. I mean, it's, I, I think of it as being like kind of Dr. Melfi to his Tony Soprano. So it's, mm. a, it's a real exciting thing. It's just a real part. And I have a, a bushy mustache and I'm kind of, you know, fusty and I wear like a, you know, um, floor shine shoes and a big corduroy jacket. I, I like, I'm kind of a nerd and the team all make fun of me. So it's fun. It's, it's definitely... I'm definitely comic relief in it. Although it is a funny show. It's a comedy. It's an adventure thriller um, comedy. And Arnold's funny. But it's, it, it takes a while to, you know, like Arnold's such a, an icon. And, and to work with him is something. Because the first, first scene, I was just, I was so nervous. I was just, I could barely speak. And it, it got better and better. And he puts you at ease which is very nice. He knows who he is. He knows what kind of effect he has on people. So he's very, um, he puts you at ease right away. And, and that's really important. And then once you're doing it, it's just like anybody else. He's funny. He likes to improvise. He wasn't afraid of, you know, he, he changes things all the time. And I'm good with that. I have no problems with that. I like it. So it's been, it's been an exciting experience. I'm, I've just had a fantastic year. I'm always so curious about the idea of legacy for you in terms of nurturing, mentoring, uh, young comics, young uh, actors, comic actors. I always think mm-hmm. about um, May Martin in the special as well. And, you know, yeah, um, I love yeah. Do, you, do you see that as sort of like, do you see that as a res- as something that is like a responsibility? You know, everybody yeah. in the special talking about how influential you've been. Do you do you see it as a role of yours to to mentor to 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 work with the next generation of comics? Yes, absolutely, I, and I like it. Um, I do this thing. I do this uh, show with a, a guy named Brandon Sakai. He's a young comedian called Fresh Breath. And I just did the second one where I, I basically it's all the young comedians who have just started out, like less than a year. Some of them like four months. They, it's their fifth time on stage. They're incredibly young. And um, they're just starting stand up. They're from all kinds of people. And then me and another comedian will judge them. They do like a five, seven minute set. And then we kind of critique them. And I enjoy that a lot. I did that, done it a couple of times at Comedy Bar. I'll probably do it again. And then I, I'm, you know, I tell them I'm very blunt. I'm very honest. You know, I try to lead with something positive. And, and then I lower the boom. But it's important. I think it's important to get really unvarnished advice. From people that have been before and so uh, i really enjoy doing it and um i'm always learning so yeah. you know and then i do a set at the end of it and then quite often <laughs> like the other night i did i i contradicted myself completely i did i i told them you shouldn't do this and this and then i did the exact same thing no <laughs> i guess i was kind of illustrating you see everybody fucks up yeah and and i don't and I you don't know mean- i Sorry, I don't mean to ask that question in a facetious way of like, you know, that, you know, the wisdom from the heavens or that you're done or anything like that, because it does seem to me with sort of with all the work you're doing, it feels like you you're at a point right now where you have a lot to do still you you a lot. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's been I, I, I'm shocked, actually. I've been I've been so prolific lately and I have a lot to do and I feel yeah I, I you know I'm here, I, I think the show really addresses our age I think we lean into it we don't hide from it and there comes a point when you go am I relevant anymore does anyone even care 
And um, this experience with everything, with sort of, with my own career, with the kids in the hall, and I realized, oh no, there's, I got lots left to say. And um, it's been, I'm rejuvenated, you know? Um, and and I, lo I like being around young people. I do, it's just, it makes me feel young. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, and, and I don't want to think that the kids in the hall, it's, you know, when, when you're doing like a retrospective or something like that, if looking backwards, what about looking forwards? What are some of the things that you maybe haven't had a chance to do yet that you'd still like to do? Oh, well, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to publish, um, some, I'd like to write some novels. Mm. That's really what I want to do. And I'd like to, and there's a movie that I'd like to get made that I've been working on for 20 years, that a script that I think is finally ready. And I'd like to make that. Uh, possibly even direct it um, and I'd li like to write a couple of books and I want to do another one man show and I want to do another buddy series I have an idea for a buddy series and um, you know yeah uh, and I hope the kids in the hall can continue to con work together I don't know if we'll there's not going to be a second season I can tell you that um, we just got told but um, we hopefully will tour and hopefully they'll be, and even if this is the last thing we ever do, like, like on television or whatever, I'm proud of it. Oh, I you wanted know. to ask you because you talked about your um, appreciation for the movie Bros. That was one that I oh, had I a loved chance it. to see it. Tiff, I yeah. loved it. It's really funny. Really funny. So many good jokes. Um, I loved it. I went to the opening with, I went to the opening with some of the people in it, Guy Branham mm -hmm. and uh, Joel Kim Booster and my manager, Zach Friedman. Uh, and it was fantastic. It was thrilling for me as, as well to look at that and go, I, I can't even believe it's happened. That would never have happened in a million years. Um, you know, there's a part of me that's like sad because I'm like, wow, but fuck, I wish I was young. I could have been in a movie like, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I, I can't, I, you know, it's, you, it, things happen. I'm proud of what I've done. Yeah. Um, and I'm proud that I'm one of the people that made that possible. And also, is there anything that you think is off limits? Do you no. think comedy has opened up in that way? I mean, did oh, you comedy, find that no, comedy has not opened up in that way. No. Comedy has closed. Comedy is, has been closing for quite a while. Um, it's a tough time to do comedy. And there has been this kind of belief that's infected a lot of people. And I do consider it an infection that certain things are, are, are not for comedy. And I think that's a, 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 a gross interpretation of comedy. And I think it's a complete disservice to comedy and to human beings. So no, I do not. Absolutely, life is a life is a joke. I mean, it all ends in death. So how can anything be beyond comedy? No, because death is the worst. And nothing's so if and and most jokes are about death. Not most, but at the heart of it. You know what I mean? You're just whistling in the dark. So no, or joking in the dark. So no, absolutely not. Everything is fodder for comedy. Right. You just have to find the right way in. Yeah. Well, yeah, death, nobody comes out of it alive, right? Yeah. It's just, these are just very, that's just a, a, a real truth. And, um, you know, they always say comedy is for people that think and drama is for people that feel. And there's some real truth to that. It's not that comedians don't feel, but for jokes, for comedy, you kind of have to take the emotion out because emotions get in the way of laughter. And if people laugh, then you have to accept that there might be something to it. And, and it's not about, comedy is not about showing how beautiful humanity is and how wonderful we all are and how all of our instincts are, you know what I mean? beyond reproach it's a lot of it is lifting up a rock and going ooh, <laughs> what yeah. people do this like you know it's, it's showing the maggots and going we can laugh at this and uh, that's why i think it's a beautiful thing and why i've given my life to it really that's really the only thing i kind of believe in right now is comedy right well i i hope we get a chance to do this again in person in a cafe. That'd be uh, nice. Yeah. To actually see you. If I do see you on the street, I will wave. Say hello. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Not just yeah. to be like say hello and, call, and, and mistake me. Say, hey Mark, you're my favorite. Yeah. I love chicken lady. <laughs> <laughs> I have that. I get that one a lot.
I really, really thank you. I appreciate it so much. I can't Thanks, wait Charles. for everyone to see the show and to see you. Oh, no, it's a great show. I mean, people are going to love the sort of. It really is. A, it's a great show. Mm -hmm. I'm proud to be part of it. Thank you so much for the time. Thank you. I really appreciate it.